All right. Welcome back to the podcast where passion and purpose collide. We are here today with Shane Evans. Um, Shane is co-founder and CEO of Massage Heights. Uh, that is a health and wellness company whose vision is to elevate lives. She has served as a CEO since January 2019. Uh, Shane is the owner of several locations uh, and co-owner of the supply chain Summit Franchise Supply co-owner of Gents Place, an ultra premium men's grooming franchise brand, and is on the board of directors for the Massage Heights Family Fund, a 501c3 crisis fund for team members in need. Uh, she's married to co-founder of Massage Heights, Wayne Evans, and they have three daughters. Shane, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, and thank you for having me. We're so excited we were able to snag you at least for a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> thank you. I know you're juggling a lot. In fact, that's kind of my first question for you, Shane, is you do juggle a lot as a, as a mama, as a co-founder of a business, of a 5013C. Um, so, so tell me how you juggle being a mom and also running these businesses. Huh. Well, um, it's support, um, number one. Uh, you can't do that all by yourself, right? So um, I'd say number one support system is the great, great dad my kids have. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he is a phenomenal father, and we've been together 30 years, and, um, and he's a girl dad through and through, mm -hmm. and those, those girls just love him. So that would be the number one thing. Um, Wayne picks up where I am not able. Um, we've got sort of a role reversal going, um, and uh, I'm very grateful for that because as much as I enjoy being at home and being with the kids, I also absolutely love what, what we do at Massage Heights and, and the other brands that we're involved in. So how does that, as, as a working mom, um, the juggle and the, we talk a lot on the Coterie about um, guilt and self-talk about how we as women feel about ourselves and about what we're doing. Um, and I think it's important to address that self-talk <laughs> in terms yeah. of what is okay with you might not be okay with someone else. Do you feel judged? How do you, do you have to justify it to yourself? Do you embrace it? How do you, because my theory is I have learned, uh, I was a single mom for eight years before I remarried. One of the things I learned through, I had three boys at that time, was that they were proud of seeing me do things that I loved or that made us feel successful or, or mattered in the world. They, so I think there's a lesson that sometimes we don't give enough credence to yeah. in having our children, especially daughters, see a strong, successful mother in that way I don't think it takes away from parenting. So how do you balance all that in your own mind? Well, you're so right. I would say that um, it's gotten easier for me over the years. It used to be a lot more difficult. Um, it, when, when I had Brady, our youngest daughter, who is now 14, we just launched the company mm -hmm. um, nationally franchising. Um, it, and um, I kept her on my desk or on the conference table in a bouncy chair until she was about nine. Aww. I wanted to make sure I could nurse her and that I was with her. Um, but about that time, it got very, very difficult. She was, you know, trying to, to get around. And so we had to change that. But um, I, I would say it's gotten easier. And, and what, something that you just said is actually one thing that has resonated with me for a very long time. When my oldest went to college, um, I remember having this conversation with her saying, Casey, I am so sorry that I wasn't that mom that was just, you know, at home when you got there. I didn't miss anything important. You know, my kids are, have all been at very athletic and involved in a lot of different extracurricular things. I don't miss games. I don't miss tournaments. I don't miss those things. But it was the little things that I wasn't just there for. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I struggled with that for a very long time. But when she went off to college, I had that conversation with her and she said, Mom, you, I am the way I am because of you. I will cry talking about this. I, yeah. am, I am because of you <laughs> and I've seen you do what you do. And I want to be like you, you know, I want to be able to be Aww. that. Person. So, ah, so, you know, it's it, when, when, when it gets hard and you feel that guilt. Um, the other thing I would just say is, you know, trying to, trying to find presence in the times that you are together. Um, I have been a lot more deliberate about mm -hmm when I am at home, you know, what kind of conversations are we having? What are we doing? Um, last night we went out for dinner. She picked the pizza place and we just had the funniest conversation. She's just this cute little 14 year old person that's growing mm -hmm. up, growing up into this beautiful, sweet young woman. And it's, it's, it's fun to just 
you know, have those conversations. And so taking the opportunity to just try to be really present and I'm not perfect, of course, you know, I get distracted too, but I think over time, um, you start to realize that when your kids turn out pretty good, um, you must have done something right, you know, so Absolutely. maybe I'm okay for doing what I'm doing. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it takes getting to those college years. We've got three in their twenties now. And my son called me after his first semester in college and said, thank you for making me uncomfortable my whole life with the conversations that we had and for challenging me because now I'm comfortable in every situation. And I was like, huh. That was one of those moments where you're like, thank God they got, they turned out okay. But I think that we put this pressure on ourselves and they're not necessarily seeing it that way. So I love the fact that you had that conversation with her and you were able to hear from her. What are you talking about? I, I, I like who I am because of the way that you raised me. Yeah. How yeah. validating is that? Right. Yeah, it is. I have to remind myself of that conversation over and over and over again when I start feeling, you know, guilty. And there, you know, there are times where I think, gosh, you know, my little one goes to a private Christian school and the moms are, a lot of the moms are up there all the time and very involved and they're wonderful families. And, you know, it's hilarious. I mean, they don't even text me anymore. My husband is on the group messages, right? For, can we, do that? Can we go here? Can we do that? And I, you know, I, I'm so grateful that that is the way it is. And at the same time, I still sometimes go, oh, like I should be that person. And yeah. it's this constant struggle. Isn't it funny that the self-talk that we have as women, um, that we should be this perfect example of what a mom is and this perfect example of a business owner and a leader and it's just impossible to, to meet our own standards sometime. Not that the world has those standards of us or even our children have those standards of us. Uh, but it is a lot of self-talk that we do. It just is. Yada, yada. I'm not perfect yet. Yeah. Well, my, my 18-year-old son actually thanked me recently for not being the band mom. <laughs> there the power struggles going on amongst the moms. And he was like, I'm so glad you're just a mother. <laughs> Mother. Yeah, right. Because I've been feeling guilty all year for not, you know, for just being just in the parking for the band. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But we all go, we all go through it. So, but that, you know, because we are juggling so many things anymore as women and, and you as a leader in the franchise space. What do you do for yourself? I've been kind of lurking and watching these wonderful retreats that you have been doing where you take time to self-reflect and look at your purpose in life and your gifting in life and where you're going, both in business and, and personal. And I, as I'm watching you go to Cabo and, and then Sedona, two gorgeous places and wonderful places to be in nature and, and reflect, I wonder what that process is like for you and why you chose to do that. I, I'm envious. I want to do that. And part of me goes, what would happen if I just took X period of time and just focused on who I am and what I'm here for and my health and well-being? So can you address that for us? Ashane? Yeah, I, I will say one, um, quite a few years back, I started meditating pretty regularly. Um, and I, I noticed that it made such a big difference in the way that I address the day and how I handled things. And, you know, if I knew I had something important coming up, sometimes I would meditate in the car on the way to work. I would just put on a meditation seven minutes and breathe. And it's amazing what we can do um, with our breath and how we can just slow our heart rate down and just clear mm -hmm. our heads. Um, so I, I didn't always take that kind of time. Of course, I mean, I founded Massage Heights. I get massages pretty regularly. I'd get them every day if I could, but I, you know, I mean, that is one of the ways that I've taken care of myself for, for many years at this point. But, um, the last two years, it just really a whole year. Last year I started the year out in Sedona. I went back to the place where actually I, the idea of massage heights was born and, in Sedona. And that was based on a kind of a crummy experience and just that spirituality and that feeling of just euphoria and uplifting that I, that I got in, in Sedona. 
Sedona. And then, yes, I just recently came back from a from a yoga retreat outside of Cabo San Lucas, a very kind of bohemian, um, simple little place that was, you know, no internet and all that. And we did yoga and meditation three times a day and journaled. And I think that that self, you know, introspection is, is so important to have the time to give you the headspace to get some clarity and to write those things down. How am I feeling? What do I like about myself? Is there, what do I love? One of the questions was, and it's so hard, write down two things that you love about yourself. And I, I had to sit there for a while, you know, and I, and I go, huh, would anybody else say the same thing or is just <laughs> me hoping that, you know, but, um, but I, I think that's really important and you don't have to go to a retreat to do it, but sometimes it takes going to a retreat, forcing yourself to make that move mm-hmm. to get into some different habit that's going to get you into a different headspace. And I just know with Massage Heights, our brand is about elevating every day. We elevate the lives of the people we touch. For us at HQ, that's our franchisees. Our number one job is to help elevate them. Their job is to elevate their team members and those team members elevate our guests and members. And I know that as the CEO of the company, as the founder, I have to uphold our values. And if our purpose is to elevate every day, then how do I show up is going to impact my team. And so I've got to be able to show up and be a positive light in, 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 you know, the days of the team that it franchising is hard. You're working with entrepreneurs. They are willing to make that jump, right? They've made a big investment and it's not always perfect. And so our field support people, it's, that's a tough job. It's not always easy. And so I know that I've got to show up a different way for them. Um, If I want our culture to really be the culture that I set out for it to be instead of some unintentional thing that just happens. And, you know, so I've got to have a a certain mindset. And, um, And again, I'm not always perfect. I don't do it all the time. I have good intentions, you know, and I try to start the morning every single day, at least with one meditation. And I often go to bed with a meditation as well. And, um, I just, it makes a big difference for me. So I I just love this. Mm -hmm. I I wish I had a piece of paper to be writing this down, discovered two things about you that you love. I mean, we can say that about others. I love this about uh, Elizabeth or this person or that person. We can quickly see their gifts, their talents, their specialness, but sometimes we forget to look at ourselves. And then the second point you made, which is, uh, as a leader, when you're stepping into that role, um, others are looking to you to be the light, right? I, in my business, we call it the head controls the body, right? And, and the way you come in then trickles to your team members and how they're looking at the business and uh, the excitement that they have for the future it comes through your words and your inspiration and you showing up clear and focused on what what it is, where you're going with that business. So talking about your team themselves, what are some things that you do to to inspire them, to inspire their focus and inspire their performance and commitment and to work and play as a team uh, going a particular direction? Yeah, I think, you know, for some of my team members, I actually have a third party that's doing some coaching with them. Um, and, uh, he's, he's great. He's been in our system as a partner for a very long time and, um, was a franchisee and, 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 and loves my team and, and that he's just, he's a life coach now. And so he's working with some of my team members. Um, you know, I, I try to, I think it's, it's hard for me to avoid any meeting without passion. So I hope Mm -hmm. that in most every every interaction that I have with my team from our Monday morning executive team meetings to one-on-ones or what have you, that that passion always shines through. Um, and again, I know I'm not, I know I'm not perfect and I get frustrated and all those things too, but I think that that is actually part of, you know, hopefully an appreciation that they have for me and being my authentic self. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard for me to show up any other way than who I am. Um, and, uh, you know, I do tend to be, Um, I don't know, you could say it's emotional, but it's more, it's more about passion, right? I get so Mm -hmm. passionate about what we're doing for our franchisees. You know, have we done enough? Are we doing enough? Could we have done that better? You know, and, um, and so 
that that comes out that fire comes out you know in in our meetings and so I, I think that I convey the vision on a pretty regular basis. I really try to incorporate our values, um, you know, into the conversations and the meetings that we have. We start all of our, you know, our system-wide calls with our franchisees with values and just kind of going over some examples of how somebody, um, you know, portrayed those values. And um, so just trying to weave it into the everyday. Um, is really how I do it. I'd love to say, oh, I'm just a great coach and I sit down and I coach <laughs> people all the time. Um, we have one-on-ones, but they're, you know, where are we at? You know, those kinds of things. And yeah. do you talk about anything? Yes, how are you doing? And, you know, all of that. But um, th- those are the things that I want to get better at as a leader, though. I really like to get into a position where I'm less operationally focused and get into a role where I'm more coaching focused, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but it's, it's hard to play both. It to- is. Yeah. I, I totally agree. It is uh, difficult to play both because your your job is to pay attention to the bottom line and the systems and processes. But a big part of that bottom line is the development of our people. And you're right. It's kind of hard to balance both of those. What do I have to do to support and develop my people and to bring out of them their full uh, potential? So it's like you almost have to be two different two different people. It's, it's true. The one thing I would say is that because we're a family brand and I, I believe our values are really based on our family values. Um, our team knows that we've had a lot of people that have been with us for a very long time. And the reason that they have been is because they know that we love them. I mean, bottom line, you know, um, they are, they are treated well and respected and yes, the work is hard at times, but they know that we love them. Um, a lot of close relationships. And so I, you know, I think, I think that's, that's evident. Um, and that makes a difference too. You know, in terms of being a a female leader, what what role do you think showing vulnerability plays in that? Because I think that's another thing a lot of women struggle with. You, you put up a front, you walk in, you need to be all together all the time. Mm -hmm. If you're elevating women, you need to be elevated (laughs) and clearly we're not all, all the time. So what do you think is the value or the risk. I think there is some risk in showing mm-hmm. too much vulnerability. How do you how do you walk that line? Well, I think it's controlled emotion, right? You can be emotional and you can be authentic and you can be passionate, but it has to be controlled too. You have to be, I think, consistent mm-hmm. uh, in that. Um, so, um, yeah, that's that's a it's a really really hard thing. Um, I think it's harder for men maybe to be themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, like I said, I have a hard, hard time kind of hiding who I am. I just am, I am me. Um, but I, but I've also learned to manage that over the years too, where I might've gotten too emotional. I'm, I kind of know what my, what my weaknesses are and what my blind spots are. And I kind of realize what I'm doing when I'm doing it. But, but I think it's important to be authentic, um, to who you Mm -hmm. are and, um, you know, show, because we do all have that to your point we and we 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 can we can um relate to someone that is not showing up perfect um you know that that might get a little emotional when they talk about their kids on a podcast or (laughs) (laughs) who wouldn't you know where i mean we we can be tough women at work but when you start talking about why you do what you do every day I mean, for me, it's my kids and, you know, and, and so that's going to be an emotional subject and I'm not afraid to let people know that about me. So I think it's about stability in the professional realm, even when there is emotion, it's about having a level of stability in the way that you're delivering. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to agree. Um, it's, it's interesting because there's a direct correlation to that transparency and that vulnerability, Elizabeth, and you were just talking about, and people trusting. You know, when, when we are vulnerable and, and genuine and transparent, um, it gives people a whole picture of who we are, not just the businesswoman or not just this particular role. And it creates greater trust and uh, greater credibility. I think it's just so, so important in life and in business. Um, And I think the tendency 
as you pointed out, is we want to be perfect mm -hmm. and, and, and meet certain standards that we have in our head. So the tendency is to try to cover some of those vulnerable parts, right? To not show that we're really hurting here or confused there. We try to kind of cover it up or even puff up sometimes uh, to come across as more confident than maybe we are or more prepared than we are or whatever it is. And so I think it's beautiful, Shane, and maybe this is part of your own self-discovery that you're comfortable. You're comfortable being transparent and genuine and vulnerable and showing all parts of yourself, even right here yeah. <laughs> in this podcast with, with us. Well, it oh. takes a lot of work because I've done the puffing up thing and all that too, right? And I had an executive coach I've had for, for years and he, he said, you know, he said, ask for ask for help in tough situations and i think as a leader you always feel like you have to have the answers yeah so you want to show up and be like oh no we're gonna do it this way or that way it's all good yeah you know and you just kind of direct meanwhile you don't always have all the answers so leverage the room you know leverage the brain power and ask questions and even show up and say you know i don't actually know the answer i don't i don't know what to do in this situation you know how, like what do you what do you what do you what are your thoughts and i think that is a hard thing especially for young leaders mm -hmm. um, because you do want to kind of prove um, that you're capable and all these things. And frankly, I, I, I used to have this conversation with a, a former team member of mine for quite some time. And it was the exact thing. I said, you, you remind me of me so much. Uh, and I can, you will be far more successful when you learn to, that you don't know everything. And it's mm -hmm. okay to express that you don't know everything. And you can come to me and say, hey, I just don't know what to do here, you know, or you can go to anybody and say that. And that's where you grow. That's where you grow. And so I don't, I, again, this has been a, a time, a transition, a period yeah. of growth, you know. I mean, when we started this company, I was 34 years old. It's been 16 years. Um, that was pretty young to start franchising. Um, and, um, you know, so I've grown a lot still have a lot of lots to go to. <laughs> I yeah, love it. I, I tell you what, it's a never ending, it's a never ending thing and self-reflection should never really stop. I'm, I'm going through a similar thing. I'm, I'm turning 50 in a couple of months. So I've been doing a little bit of the same thing, trying to reclaim some things and let go of some things and find the, the next 50 years of my life. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of that time where I think that happens for a lot of us. Yes, yes. absolutely. I, it is a time to reflect. I'm way past that age. So <laughs> call me if you want to know how to traverse the next 15 yeah. years. Okay? I, I may need to do that because the, the last couple have been like, whoa, like, is this, this happened? When you just happened in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I, I have a question about YPO. I know you've been involved with a young professionals organization, YPO, for a while. Uh, can you talk about that, the benefits you get out, how, what, you, what you show up with when you go there? Sure. Uh, I've always been curious about it. it. It just seems to be such an incredible organization for leaders like yourself. Oh, it's an amazing organization. So YPO is um, Young Presidents Organization. It's a global organization. There's about 24,000 members, I think. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a qualification criteria to, to get in. It's based on sales volume as well as number of team members that you have and all of those things. And um, it's, it's, it's an amazing organization. There's local chapters, you know, there's regional chapters and there's, I mean, there's, there's chapters throughout the world. And so they do events that are global events that are incredible. I mean, you get the opportunity to meet people from all over the world that are doing unbelievable things for, for this amazing world that we live in. And you often get first glimpse into that. And so just the education around that is pretty awesome. 
Um, but where I've gotten the most value out of YPO is actually in my local chapter and specifically with my forum. So um, most YPO members end up in a forum of about eight people and then you have your chapter, right? So you have chapter events every month, but you also have your forum meetings every month and they're four hour meetings. And for my forum is a very holistic one and YPO is pretty holistic. It really focuses on, you know, both the members as well as the spouse and the kids. And so it's, I like and appreciate that about that. And it's a, it is a organization of both hired guns, entrepreneurs and family legacy members. And so it's a, it's a nice mix instead of just all being entrepreneurial or all hired guns. Um, but the most benefit I've gotten from it is my actual forum because we have a very holistic forum that understands that, you know, our balance and our, our health, mental health and physical health really is um, influenced by mm -hmm. business, family, self, you know, all of those things. And so um, it's been an amazing experience to just learn from others. YPO, there's a rule in YPO and that is just you don't you don't advise people. Um, it's really about experience sharing. And so in almost every situation, as far as off as it may be from anything else that you're dealing with, you always get some little nugget, you know, um, through that process of, of experience sharing in those forum meetings. So it's invaluable. I have wonderful friends, people that I can trust. Um, it's very different than, you know, going home to my husband, who is also a founder and principal in the company, who I don't want to talk to about business because I really don't want his feedback. Um, <laughs> When I get home, I'm like, there's a time and place. For yeah, so it's great to be able to go to, you know, those, those, those forum mates and be able to have conversations and get, you know, insights for business, but also just for family life. Because again, you know, being in a family business, it's difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. there you love my family, but it is difficult. And um, you can't necessarily talk to family about the challenges that you're having with them. I mean, you, you know, you can to some degree, but so it's just been, it's been a, an amazing part of my life the last, I think it's been six or seven years now, five, six, seven years. Yeah. So, um, I really enjoyed it. I encourage anybody that can, you know, uh, do it, do it. It's, it's, uh, incredible experiences. This year, of course, has been a little wild because of, of COVID and, you know, wow. but Wow. So Elizabeth, we're going to have to have Shane back to talk about this working with family. <laughs> thing, because it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. And you pointed out one of the challenges with it, if your challenge is with your family member who you adore and you love and you want to succeed, you can't always kind of brainstorm how to fix that problem right there. Sometimes a third party or a group of others is, is, is helpful. Um, so YPO has been helpful it, with, with that and of course a million other, other things, but I would love to have Shane back and maybe do some kind of panel discussion with her and others that are working with family and the franchise. That would be great. Cause talk about self-talk, right? So when, when you're in business with family members uh, or a spouse who have known you for many, many years, they see you as a specific way, right? You yes. were your little brother who did that thing that was dumb or right. Or that your sister was very emotional or that whatever. And so it's, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, the people that, you know, from back your siblings, you were, they are a certain way to you, even though they've grown. And so yes. it's, uh, you, then you start going, well, you know, what are they saying about me? So anyways, yes, we can have a whole. Oh my gosh. You're yeah. just speaking we're my language. Recently, uh, <laughs> I recently hired my um, grandson in law. And of course, he has seen me as a grandma and as a mama and all of those kinds of things that didn't know nothing about the business. And he's been on the phone calling uh, many of our clients who are just raving about our company's Oracle profiles and the tool and Rebecca Monet. And he's been sitting in on this thing. And and all of a sudden he's going, I had no idea you were a genius. <laughs> wow, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. I can't believe how people talk about it because he sees me as his grandma on the floor with the babies, right? He doesn't yeah. see me as a business. And, and the same way here, you know, it's, it's so important to have <laughs> 
the YPOs and the, the coaches and the friends that see you outside of that family environment, especially when you're there. Elizabeth, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just <laughs> Oh, wanna... no, no. I was just saying, you, we're a family of pigeonholers. So once you've been pigeonholed as whatever, who, however you're identified, it follows you for 50 years, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, we have, uh, my, my son and his boyfriend are working for us on the coterie. So we're, we're, we're in the same boat with lots of different dynamics. And ours are young. When you were talking about um, working with young people as leaders and wanting to prove, I mean, there's some of that with young 20 something boys and how do we call that, but also encourage them to grow and push and expand. You know, it's just, it, it could go on forever, this kind of conversation, because there's so much more invested in it. Okay. In that We're going to have Shane back. But in the yes. meantime, I have one more question if we have time, Elizabeth. Yes. Yay. Yay. Okay. Thank you for making time. I'm so excited. All right. So tell me about your 501c3, this family fund that you have for your team members. I, I want to learn everything about that and hopefully others will listen and emulate what you're doing. Yeah. So, I mean, again, Massage Heights is a family owned and operated brand. We have family values. Family takes care of one another. We don't always get along, but we always <laughs> love on one another. Right. We take care of one another, right? Um, and it's no different for the team members across our franchise system. So we developed um, the Heights Family Fund as a way to take care of team members in need in a crisis. So it could be a medical crisis, a financial crisis, something that a financial crisis that was caused by something out of the ordinary. Um, so we, we have um, many of our franchisees contribute to it. Many of the team members contribute to it, just, you know, a, a dollar a paycheck. And so growing that and, um, you know, we get quite a few requests uh, during um, one of the hurricanes in Houston a couple years ago. I think we, we gave 50 grants out and there were a lot of people that were affected by those floods and, you know, lost their homes and cars and all those things. But we've also given um, we had mama that lost a child. We had, you know, um, a therapist that had heart surgery. We had, you know, they're just different things. Um, and so we do it to, to, to really help, you know, the team members of our franchisees understand that they really are part of something bigger, that there is a family that's here for them when they need it. They don't have to contribute to it to get anything from it. Um, their franchisee just has to ask uh, you know, for what is needed. And then of course we have an approval process with the board, but, um, uh, it's, it's a, it's a great thing. My mom actually runs the Heights family fund. Um, uh, we started it back when I was on undercover boss, we had, a, a, a one of the team members that I worked with, um, had lost his sister to, uh, someone, someone shot her and she had two children and he had taken on these two children. And, um, I really wanted to help him, with those kids. And so we, we had been talking about starting the Heights Family Fund for a while. That was the sort of inspiration that finally got it started. And we've just been able to hire, we've, we've helped, I don't even know how many people, hundreds and hundreds of people at this point. So um, that's, it's been amazing. And it's a, it's a, it's a big passion for my mom as well. And um, she's, she's a very good representative of the, of the family fund. So Beautiful. It, it just shows you living your values. And I think when people see you doing that, whether it's your team or your franchisees or potential franchisees or even customers, when you see someone walk the walk and talk the talk, you know, then your sincerity really shines through. I think that's so critical and probably why your culture has been so successful is because you're, you're living those family values out loud. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, we've got a lot of great franchise partners and, you know, we, we recruit our franchisees based on value alignment. And I think it's very evident when candidates come through the process of who we are as a family brand and, um, you know, how we're going to deal with things when, when there are challenges. And so having those great franchisees um, really emulate that culture at that local level is, is amazing. And of course, we can always do more, but um, we continue to, to work on that and try to educate people on the fund and um, make sure that, you know, people know that it's there for them if they ever need it. So we, we enjoy doing that. It's a nice, nice way to give back. And, you know, again, our franchisees give every year as well. So they're, they're a big part of why we're able to do that. We facilitate it, but they're, they're big givers. So. I love this. I hate for this conversation to be over. <laughs> um, so if anyone that's listening to our conversation today is interested in Massage Heights, you feel like you have a values alignment 
with what Shane and family and team uh, have going. How would they get hold of you? Or if they wanted to learn about Jen's place, how would they get hold of you, Shane? Sure. I, I'll just give my email address out. I think that's the easiest way. It's S Evans at massageheightsfranchising.com. And then if you just go to our website, massageheights.com, there is a link to our career site if you're interested in a career. And if you're interested in franchising, there's a link to the franchising site. And of course, all the others, you know, LinkedIn and Instagram and all those things. But I would just say email is the best way to get in touch with me personally. Excellent. Shane, thank you so much for sharing your heart and your vision. Um, I learned a ton. And I think others have also learned and been inspired by your story. So we appreciate your transparency and uh, taking the time with us. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice, nice conversation. And you guys were you made it very easy, <laughs> easy to talk about being a mom and all those good things. I'm sure it's we're all, we can all relate. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs>